you've been following my channel for a while now, you know I've been working on turning my Palm Springs property into a vacation rental. I've learned a lot along the way getting this thing ready for Airbnb and a whole year after renovating, decorating, and putting the finishing touches on it, it's finally done. Welcome to my Airbnb the Racket Club Resort. We now have merch, link down below if you wanna get some. This is my Airbnb I've been working on for the past year, almost exactly, and it is finally ready for Airbnb. Oh, well, there's like two things I need to do still, but it's basically ready for Airbnb. In this video, I wanted to go over some of the mistakes I made and things I wish I knew when getting this set up for Airbnb. And I will do a follow-up on this video after we've had a bunch of guests and see what I've learned there. But for now, this is from the perspective of just getting it ready for the first guest. So let's go over some of the things that I learned that I think are applicable to really any Airbnb. The first thing is to get a smart lock and really get this sooner rather than later. It's gonna make your life much easier. There's no reason to really wait to get one of these. It's just gonna make your life so much easier. And if you're running an Airbnb, you're probably gonna wanna get one at some point anyway for guests to use, but it just makes it way easier if you have to do anything involving a handyman. If you have one that you trust, you can just give them the code, have them unlock it. You don't have to meet them at the house. You don't have to exchange keys or anything annoying like that. And if you think at any point you're gonna need basically anyone to be there when you're you're not there, which you probably will, this will make it so much easier. You're not gonna lose keys. Um, you also don't have to deal with lost keys. Of course, you can also do a lockbox. Those are less expensive, but they're also harder to use and you still have keys involved. We waited like four months to install it and I don't know why we did that. Everything was much easier after we installed this. So unless you plan to change the door or something like that, I would say just get this sooner than later. Next is to get pillow and mattress protectors for all of your beds. If you don't have a pillow protector, you'll slowly find that people find a way to like get stains on the pillows and you don't wanna have to be replacing those all the time. That definitely adds up. Whereas a pillow protector, you can get them on Amazon a four pack for like $15. So that I would say is a must. It will keep everything much cleaner because it's just another layer against the actual pillow. So if someone gets a stain on the pillow protector, much easier to take that off and wash it. Or if it's totally ruined, it's no big deal because they're like $4. But if someone stains your pillow, kind of, impossible to wash i don't really know how you would do it and even if you do it just it's just gonna get kind of gross over time a mattress protector also all the beds here have them just because you don't know someone could spill coffee and just stain the mattress and that stain would look sketch it's a small investment up front to make everything last a lot longer and just stay overall cleaner next thing is to get a good vacuum and if you can a robot vacuum as you set up the place in especially if you have to renovate it's gonna get messy even just breaking down boxes and building furniture it really can get the floors pretty messy so i have the robo rock at seven i made a whole video about here at the house which is very convenient for these concrete floors and then i also have the Roborock H7, which is more of a traditional cordless vacuum. I think especially if you're doing renovations, but even if you're just unboxing a lot of stuff, there's gonna be dust and just like things on the ground everywhere. It is really handy to have an easy to use vacuum or a robot vacuum. I think the robot vacuum would have saved me. When we first got the house, it had this white tile that showed everything, every little footprint. We had two dogs staying here. So I'm not kidding, I was vacuuming twice a day when I could have saved all that time if I had had this. So I think a robot vacuum is worth the investment. It will save you so much time and it can even save your cleaning crew time. So you might be able to cut a deal with them if they're not having to, you know, mop the floors and everything. So if you guys didn't see my full video about the Robo Rock, what's really cool about this one is that it can mop as well as vacuum and it knows the difference between carpet and surfaces that it should mop. So it does a really good job. I got some shots of it basically just cleaning up this coffee spill. I also have the Robo Rock H7 and this is really great for cleaning areas like under the couch cushions, places that is a little harder for a robot vacuum to get. This one also does a good job getting little corners. It has a bunch of different 
attachments that you can use. It's also good for like in between window sliders, that kind of thing, because that is probably not possible really for a robot vacuum to get. The H7 has 90 minutes of runtime, which is really, really good, and it recharges in two and a half hours. I also like that you can see the percentage of how much battery you have left. I've tried other robot vacuums that are cordless like this, and most of them don't tell you how much, and then all of a sudden it dies, and you're like, wait, what? It's only 3.2 pounds. So if you need to clean something up high, like kind of get the dust off, it's really good for that as well. Next thing I learned is to get two to three sets of sheets for each of the beds. So obviously you wanna have some sheets on hand in case somebody ruins them, but that's not the only reason you wanna have some extra sets. The real reason is that so you don't have to wait for all the laundry to be done to remake the beds. Otherwise your cleaning crew could end up waiting a whole extra couple hours just to make the bed or yourself if you're the one cleaning them and that is a huge waste of time and money. It's something that I'm sure every Airbnb does but I didn't really think about until we were getting closer to listing this. So when I first bought a set of sheets I just bought one set for each bed but you really might as well just buy two maybe even three. The next thing I would do differently is spend less money on a lot of the furniture pieces that we got because the thing is they are going to get messed up. For example we bought a really nice very expensive media console from blue dot it's amazing and we love it but you know it would be better in like your own home not an airbnb it has already gotten scratched up and that's before renters have even gotten here it got scratched up when we had the floors redone so you can only imagine when people are here and there's just more wear and tear on the house so i kind of wish we had just gotten something cheaper that media console was like $3,000 and you could get something for less than $500 that would be just as good. Nobody is booking the house because of the media console, so it's not worth spending that much money on. And one thing I'd really recommend is checking out outlet stores like the West Elm outlet, Crate and Barrel has an outlet. In these, you'll find a ton of couches, coffee tables. They even do have beds, desks, console tables, really everything. I will say some of it is just kind of the rejects that nobody wanted, but a good amount of it is actually stuff that people returned that they ordered online. And there's actually nothing wrong with it at all. It's really cool. It's still available on the website at the same price. You can get it shipped from the outlet stores, but it's better to just rent a truck and get a bunch of the stuff that you need. It's definitely cheaper that way. Even if you have the money and you have a really big budget to get amazing furniture, just keep in mind that it's probably Probably gonna get a little dinged up and so I don't know I just wouldn't get that dream white couch for an Airbnb you know what I mean you want to spend enough that it's comfortable and it's not gonna break if somebody sits on a chair but you don't want to spend so much that you're gonna be upset if it gets scratched that's one thing I would do differently and I did start to do differently all of the dining chairs were really inexpensive from Wayfair and they look great and no one has ever like none of them have broken nothing's ever gone wrong and last but not least i would advise you to get a label maker the thing about a vacation rental or an airbnb they are the same thing i'm realizing the thing about an airbnb is a lot of people are going to come into this house yourself a cleaning crew and a bunch of different guests so if things aren't really labeled people are just going to guess where things go and they're usually wrong I found. <laughs> I wish I would have just gotten a label maker a little bit sooner. It's very different from your own house where you're the only one placing things where they go so you always know where it goes. It just makes it easier and a label maker that's like $20. It's worth it. It's also helpful for labeling the Airbnb closet or just on the spot if you think of something that you need to kind of post somewhere and you don't want to have to go print it out. It's really handy. Like say people keep leaving a slider open, you can like quickly make a label, like please keep closed at all times. Like boom, you're done, easy. So I've been using it a lot to organize the Airbnb closet and keep everything organized. I find that if you don't label where things go, people, it just, yeah, it ends up being kind of crazy in there. That is one thing. I'll link this one below. It has served me well. Even if you don't have an Airbnb, Loki, these are really nice. Like I had one long before I ever had this house actually, because I would just label things in my office, label all my hard drives. Like I feel like everyone just needs a label maker probably in their life. They're pretty great. So that is pretty much all the things I wish I knew when it comes to setting this place up for its first guest. So I will 
do a follow-up after we've had a number of people stay here. And I also will share how much we make on this place, like how much it costs to break even, all of that later on. Coming soon because this place is ready, actually. It's ready for Airbnb. It's not live yet. We're actually still waiting for the rental certificate, but it's basically ready. That is it. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I will see you in my next video.